are a number of things that can go wrong with your car, even if you're driving safely. These emergency situations can become disastrous, especially if handled incorrectly. Let's take a look at some potentially serious incidents and ways in which to handle them. This first incident is actually caused by driver error. Traction loss can cause you to lose total control of your vehicle if not handled properly. In the interest of safety, we're using country roads to show you an example of traction loss. Not only that, but the sharp curves and loose gravel are primary reasons that tires lose traction. Traction loss is caused by driving too fast around curves or braking too hard, especially on slippery surfaces. If you notice the front or rear of your vehicle moving outward from the intended path of travel, you're experiencing traction loss. In order to regain traction, you must first direct your vision to your intended path of travel and then turn your steering wheel in the desired direction. I can't emphasize that enough. Always look where you want to go, not where the traction loss has caused you to go. Next, be sure to release any pedal that you are pushing to allow your vehicle's weight to redistribute. If your vehicle still hasn't regained traction, ease off the steering and tap your brake. Once the vehicle has regained traction, steering will become responsive again and you will need to make necessary adjustments to return to the intended path of travel. By the time you become visually aware of traction loss, it's fairly difficult to regain control of your vehicle. However, if you are properly seated, you are more likely to detect traction loss through movement, therefore giving you a better chance to regain traction. While traction loss is caused by driver error, a lot of dangerous problems occur seemingly out of nowhere. If you're driving down the road and one of your tires blows out, you can be in serious danger. What should I do if that happens? Since we're on an empty street, we can practice the appropriate steps. If your tire blows, grip your steering wheel tightly and take your foot off the accelerator. Good. The vehicle will pull in the direction of the blown tire. Braking will make it worse. So let the car slow to a stop by itself. If you absolutely must brake, do it gently. Check the traffic around you and turn on your hazard lights to warn others. What do I do now? Get out and replace the tire. Check out the basic car maintenance bonus feature for a simple explanation on how to change a tire. While driving, you may also experience steering, accelerator, and engine failure. While these are rare, you should still be prepared to handle them. If your accelerator pedal gets stuck in the down position, immediately shift to neutral to disconnect your engine from the wheels. Calmly search for a place to pull over and steer and brake smoothly off the road. Once safely stopped off the road, turn your vehicle off and activate your hazard lights. Do not attempt to drive the car again. Call for help and have your accelerator pedal repaired. You should react similarly to engine failure. However, braking and steering will become very difficult when the engine shuts off. Once stopped, try to restart the engine. If the engine won't restart, activate your hazard lights raise the hood, and call for help. Now, if your steering fails, here's what you should do. This empty parking lot is perfect for simulating steering failure. I've never heard of this happening to anyone I know. Driving is the ultimate what if, Molly. Most people go a lifetime without this happening to them, but it does happen, so you've got to be prepared. So what should I do if it happens? You must communicate with other drivers immediately by using your horn and activating your hazard lights. Let's start driving. And when I say so, pretend your steering has failed. Now, your steering has failed. Don't be shy. Now's the time to be assertive with that horn. People have got to know you have a serious problem. Try it again. That's it. Now use your parking brake to come to a stop. You have to push on it with some force. I know that takes some time to get used to, but using the parking brake is safer than using the brake pedal. Using the brake pedal in this situation could cause the car to swerve out of control. Now let's put the car in park. And then I'd call for help. Right. That's why it's a good idea to have a cell phone with you at all times. But only use it for emergencies, not to call your girlfriends while you're driving. Yes, I know, Dad. 
Of all the vehicle malfunctions you may encounter, brake loss might be the scariest. It's important to remain calm and follow the necessary steps to bring your car to a stop. When you first realize you've lost your brakes, pump your brake pedal quickly in an attempt to build pressure. You may be able to build enough pressure to bring your car to a stop. Pumping the brake pedal doesn't always work. If it doesn't, remain calm and follow these next few steps. Downshift to a lower gear and activate your hazard lights to warn other drivers. Then apply your parking brake. The parking brake should help you gradually come to a stop because it controls the rear brakes and is separate from the hydraulic brakes your pedal controls. If your vehicle still hasn't stopped, don't panic. Follow the next set of steps in the order they're mentioned. First, search for an uphill slope. By coasting uphill, your car will decelerate and you may be able to come to a safe stop. If an uphill slope is nowhere to be found, carefully rub your wheels against the curb to help slow your vehicle. If a curb is not an option, then scrape your vehicle against guardrails to help slow your vehicle. If none of these options are available and a collision is unavoidable, you should steer for soft fixed objects such as bushes rather than hard objects like trees or brick walls. If a collision with another vehicle is unavoidable, try to steer for a sideswipe rather than a head-on collision. Head-on collisions produce the greatest impact and increase your chance of serious injury. Remember, the last few steps should only be performed if the previous safer steps fail to bring your vehicle to a stop. I know it's scary to think about, but you need to know what to do just in case it happens to you. Let's just hope it never does. Congratulations on finishing the program. Hopefully the instruction and demonstrations have helped you to become a safe, skillful driver. Please check out the in-car lessons to learn more about what you should practice in depth before applying for your license. Also be sure to check out the awesome bonus features on this DVD, including the virtual driver and basic car maintenance sections. Need any help, sis? Yeah, about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Adam and his friends have all become licensed drivers with the help of their parents. And you will too if you practice safe driving procedures and follow the rules of the road. Good luck!